All right, so I think it's time to take a break from gaming laptops and focus on something that appeals to the masses, which is thin and light laptops. Now, we've covered some amazing laptops in the category, both from AMD and Intel. Speaking of AMD, finding a Zen 3 U-series chip is still like a treasure hunt from region to region, even though they offer incredible performance and amazing power efficiency. Intel, on the other hand, well, you can literally just walk into any retail store and pick up a Tiger Lake laptop right away. It's just an unfortunate situation at the moment and clearly Intel is at an advantage. But anyways, today we're taking a look at this. This is the ThinkPad X1 Carbon from Lenovo. Now, the ThinkPad series has a special place in my heart because I remember the first laptop in the family being a ThinkPad. Uh, you know, those really chunky ones. I can't really remember the exact model name of it, but what I do remember is using dial-up internet to access the web. And sometimes when the trackpad doesn't work, I would use the track point and the, uh, the dedicated left and right buttons to uh, navigate through the UI, which I believe was Windows 95. Man those days. So the evolution of the ThinkPad series is quite remarkable. They keep getting thinner and lighter while offering better performance and durability. Uh, the X1 Carbon has been available for years and we're taking a look at their ninth generation offering. Uh, what they've done here is they brought a few improvements to the table compared to the 8th gen X1 Carbon, a lot of which that I love personally. So having used the XPS 13, the Razorbook 13, the ZenBook 13 OLED and a few other thin and light laptops, does the X1 Carbon give those options a run for its money? Well, let's find out after we take it today's video sponsor. Come on, it's easy. You just have to catch them. Man, my reflexes suck today. I need more speed, have no fear. 360 Hertz is here with the awesome fast IPS panel that will make you get good. Uh -huh. The PG 259 QNR monitor comes with a regular stand and this awesome ROG desk mounting kit to free up some real estate, has built-in NVIDIA Reflex Latency Analyzer to give competitor gamers an accurate measurement of system latency. Wow. And of course, it's G-Sync equipped to minimize display stutter and input lag. Get the proper speed to catch all the frames. Check it out below. All right, so let's kick things off with pricing and the different spec configurations that you can opt for. So the base model starts at a little over $1,400. And for that, you get a Core i5-1135G7 with four cores and eight threads, eight gigabytes of RAM that's soldered, uh, 256 gigabytes of storage, Intel Iris Xe graphics, and a 1200p IPS display. The next tier comes with an i7-1165G7, twice the memory and storage uh, for around 1865. The sample that I have over here comes with the upgraded display option uh, that's 4K and brighter for $2,000. And if you want to obviously spec this thing out, you can get the i7-1185G7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of storage for an extra $400. Now, Given that this is a Lenovo laptop, pricing is certainly not the most consistent factor, just because there are many sales going around from a month to month basis with huge discounts. So you could end up picking one up for a really good deal. But then again, examining their retail value, I've come to realize that it's actually more expensive than the XPS 13, uh, the Razorbook 13, and most definitely the ZenBook 13 OLED. So what exactly are you getting for that price? Well, I wanna start with the exterior design and the build quality improvements that you get compared to the competition. First off, this entire chassis is made out of a combination of carbon fiber and magnesium alloy to enhance durability. And the ThinkPad series goes through a bunch of tests and it results in being able to withstand extreme temperatures, mechanical shocks, vibrations, and a whole lot more. In fact, Lenovo has a whole explainer series talking about their durability aspect of the ThinkPad series, which is certainly worth reading up. It's built really well, and you can sort of feel that the moment you unbox this thing. Uh, the only thing to watch out for is wear and tear over time because this material, especially with the palm rest and obviously the carbon fiber finish, is that it picks up finger oil easily. So you'll have to make sure to clean this every now and then to maintain its aesthetics. Speaking of which, I really like it. It's an all black chassis uh, with the ThinkPad logo tucked away in the corner with the red LED that uh, indicates the power state. The hinge is really smooth and you can open it with one hand. Uh, it's a new single hinge design, which is an upgrade from previous years and it barely exhibits any wobble. So that's great news for anyone who loves to type with the laptops on their laps. 
As for size, keep in mind that this has a 14 inch display. So it's a little bit bigger than my XPS 13 and even the Razorbook 13. It's still very thin coming in at 0.59 inches or 14.9 millimeters. And given the carbon fiber and magnesium alloy construction, it only weighs around 2.5 pounds, which is the lightest thin alight laptop that I've ever come across, at least here in the studio. So great stuff, Lenovo. The power adapter is also extremely compact. It's a 65 watt charger and it charges a laptop via USB type C. And interestingly, this thing has rapid charge, which juices up the laptop from zero to 80% in just about an hour. That's actually amazing for people who travel a lot, let alone professionals who work most of their time away from their workstations. Um, I just really hope other laptop manufacturers uh, implement something like this with their devices moving forward. The interior space is very similar compared to last gen. You get the standard layout with the well-known track point right at the center, along with its own dedicated primary left and right buttons. If you pay close attention to the function keys, you'll notice that they've implemented communication commands that can be linked up to Skype and Microsoft Teams. The function and control keys are positioned differently, but that's a ThinkPad hallmark. So if you really find that annoying, you can just go into Vantage and switch that up, which is definitely a nice uh, option that they offer. Uh, the power button also acts as a fingerprint reader and it works really well. Um, there's also a separate chip inside that stores the data. And of course, you also have an IR camera with Windows Hello support uh, for a simplified and secure login experience. The keys themselves are amazing, guys. I've wanted to try one of these for a while because it's been the gold standard for years. And the travel distance is great. It gives you a very satisfying feel when you compose sentences. On top of that, it's also spill resistant, which is a huge bonus. Uh, I'm actually gonna let Mike chime in on his experience compared to his older 6th gen X1 Carbon because he actually noticed a few interesting observations. So that's definitely worth uh, mentioning or worth watching. They made the trackpad slightly wider and given that it has a glass surface, navigating within windows uh, was just a breeze. It's actually a very similar experience compared to the XPS 13. I also have to mention that the integrated left and right buttons are excellent, in fact, it's tactile, but at the same time, also mushy. It's one of the best things that I've experienced on a laptop. I think I'm gonna do a quick sound test just to give you guys a quick idea or just a rough idea on how this thing feels. Taking a look at the IO, I'm actually impressed with what the ThinkPad offers considering its low profile design. So on the left hand side, you get a few Thunderbolt 4 ports, a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, an HDMI 2.0 port. Uh, switching over to the right hand side, there's Kensington Lock, another USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, and a headphone jack. I'm actually a little disappointed that they didn't include USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports because they have twice the bandwidth compared to Gen 1. Um, it could be a design limitation, but it's still weird to see on a laptop that costs so much money. Moving on to the display, and one of the biggest upgrades from Gen 8 to Gen 9 is the inclusion of a 16 by 10 screen, which gives you more vertical screen real estate so you can have more content filling up your screen. I have the UHD plus 60 hertz non-touch variant, and it is an excellent panel with beautiful color reproduction. Uh, it's an IPS panel and it covers 100% sRGB, 91% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3. That's OLED level, guys, which is amazing. And on top of that, it gets super bright. Our sample goes as far as 514 nits. So whether if you're a professional photographer or just someone who works on presentations for your company, um, you're seriously in for a treat. My only issue, though, is it's a glossy finish, and Lenovo hasn't added any anti-reflective coating to cut down the reflections. Plus, this panel doesn't have the privacy guard feature that disables the view angle from both left and right uh, to protect the content on the screen. Uh, you only get that feature with the 1200p matte display option, which is 500 nits, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but also, another thing to note is that those panels uh, take a slight hit on the color gamut. So what I'm gonna do right now is let Mike chime in with his thoughts on the new X1 Carbon. So take it away, man. All right, guys, Eber asked me to jump in front of the camera here because I am a die-hard ThinkPad user. I've been using actually this little guy right over here, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon 6th Gen for the last three years. And it's been through hell. It's been through rainstorms in Taiwan. It's been lost in Vegas. It's basically been through everything, but it's still going and I absolutely love it. But like a lot of ThinkPad users, I don't want there to be any changes 
to the ThinkPad unless it's absolutely necessary. So what are my thoughts about this X1 Carbon? And I've been using this for about a week. For the most part, the changes that have been made intergenerationally, they've been for the better. For example, that 16 by 10 screen that they're now using. From a productivity standpoint, it's a huge upgrade. Now, the funny thing for me is that going to that 16 by 10 screen, I didn't actually realize what I was getting, but when I stepped back to my old ThinkPad, that's when I realized what I was losing. On the other hand, I really have to appreciate the fact that they've upgraded the finish on it. Mine, you can see the fingerprints and the schmoo on there from a mile and a half away. The new one, it still gets marked up quite a bit, but at the same time, it doesn't show quite as much of the junk as the older one. The other thing that they really did upgrade, or what I think is a downgrade, is the keyboard. That ThinkPad keyboard has always been legendary. Mine, I love the throw distance, I love the fact that there's a little bit of tactile feedback, it just feels right. The new one, it's really hard to describe this, and I'm gonna struggle with words here a little bit, but it almost feels like they pulled a little bit of the life out of that older ThinkPad keyboard in order to make it maybe a little bit more low profile in order to fit upgraded components inside. Other than that, the port selection is the same, so you don't need to go to dongle life like you do with the XPS 13, for example. Lenovo kept all of the ports that were there and upgraded the ones that needed to be upgraded. The last thing I wanted to mention is the webcam because it's something that I noticed again and again and again over the conference calls that I had in the last week or so. So let's get to that. Well guys, this is the webcam test on the sixth generation X1 Carbon. And as you can see, it's a three-year-old laptop webcam. There's, looks like there's Vaseline smeared over my face. There's a lot of noise going around and auto exposure, even though auto exposure is off. It looks like it's still on by all of this flickering going on in the screen. Now I'm going to switch over to the new X1 Carbon to really, really hope that it looks a lot better than this one. And welcome to the ninth generation ThinkPad X1 Carbon. And what can I say? Oh my god. I, in some ways, it has actually gotten worse than three years ago. So first of all, there's this odd sharpening going on. And yes, I don't look like I was smeared with Vaseline, except now I look like I have craters all over my face or something. Not only that, is that the colors are so subdued. It To me, it really, really doesn't look good. Even looking at in the screen right now, it almost looks black and white. I'm wondering if the actual recording is going to be like that. Other than that, I mean, luckily auto exposure turns itself off completely now, so you can really balance that one way or another. But otherwise, I really want to know what you guys think about this. To me, it's a disappointment. There's a professional device, and yes, you're going to be seen on, on Zoom calls, so a little, little he talking head down there, but how is it looking like this? And what I've done here is I've gone through the settings to do the best possible capture. And this is it, guys. What do you think? So, yeah, that webcam test didn't go as well as we thought it would. But hey, on the positive side, They've implemented dual front-facing speakers uh, with this generation, and it sounds amazing. There is good clarity in the high end, and the bass response is respectable. To be honest, I didn't expect this from a ThinkPad, but um, I'm gonna take it anyway, guys. Upgradability is pretty limited on the X1 Carbon. The memory is soldered onto the PCB, and the primary NVMe SSD is right over here. And the drive speeds are really fast, specifically with reads. However, the write performance is average. There is a WAN slot which adopts the M.2 interface, but it's strictly meant for networking cards. I tried to install my Toshiba RC100 SSD, but the BIOS refused it. Uh, now, I'm aware that some Gen 6 laptops can take secondary drives, but with the Gen 9, I'm not really sure, guys. But anyways, let's talk about battery life, because this thing has a 4K screen, which, to be honest, is pointless in a 14-inch form factor, but we were just interested to see how it stacks up with the other thin and light laptops that we've tested. And, well, first of all, if you want the best battery life, absolutely avoid the 4K screen, and maybe even think about grabbing the i5 instead of the i7 our sample has. But even with those two things working against it, the X1 Carbon actually gets some reasonable numbers at almost 13 hours in the light load test. Remember, that, other than the Dell XPS 13, all the other competitors here have either smaller screens or lower resolutions. So with that in mind, this is actually pretty impressive, and it makes me wonder if the 1200p model would come closer to the ZenBook numbers. Under a heavier load, well, there's nothing to complain about here either, with the X1 posting the longest battery life of any thin and light Tiger Lake laptop we've seen so far. 
I mean, look, this class of ThinkPad isn't meant for running multi-core loads while being unplugged, but if you need to, well, at least you won't have to find an outlet every hour. But this all leads to something pretty interesting about this laptop, and that's its performance mode. You see, Lenovo has always targeted the Carbon series at professionals who just want to plug in their laptop and start using it day in and day out with minimum amount of fuss. So that means no fiddling around with settings or bloatware, and most of all, nothing that takes away from productivity time. Anyways, that led them to create a really straightforward power plan where the modes are switched through the standard Windows Power Manager in your taskbar. Um, there are two auto modes that allow the system to manage surface temperatures, CPU speeds, and noise, while favoring either a balanced approach or uh, a more performance uh, area. There's also a manual performance mode that simply allows the processor to run at higher speeds for longer periods of time. You can actually see this quite well with both performance and auto performance delivering really similar power input right up until the four minute mark of our test. Then the algorithm Lenovo uses in auto mode dials things back to between 12 and 15 watts until surface temperatures are reduced. And then it kicks things up again. Meanwhile, performance mode simply runs at 23 watts all day. Auto balance on the other hand, well, I'm not sure if you want to be running this for any intensive tasks since it limits the processor to just seven watts. That's perfect for most of the folks who are looking at the X1, but it's terrible for anything other than a light workload. You can actually see what happens with clock speeds when those three modes are being used. Balanced barely sticks above one gigahertz while the other two performance modes offer more than double the amount of speed. And honestly, if you're in a pinch and trying to render out a file or get a bit of extra transcoding work done, ditching out the out-of-the-box balance mode is the only thing to do. That all translates into auto performance and performance hitting just above 95 degrees for shorter amounts of time before the fans pick up a bit of steam and draws things down to a lot more reasonable levels. But you can still see how the automatic setting gets quite aggressive for a few minutes before letting its foot off the gas and then it lets temperature spike again. It does that over and over again. When you look at balance, well, it's what you probably expected. It's cool and really well behaved right across the board, barely reaching above 50 degrees. But good news about all of this is regardless of whatever mode you're in, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon is one of the quietest machines out here. For the professionals and even students who buy these things, that's pretty important since the last thing anyone wants is for a meeting to be interrupted by a loud laptop. And even when running at full tilt, surface temperatures are well managed, which means working with it on your lap in the airport or in a classroom setting shouldn't really pose any problems. There is a small hotspot on the back, but it's focused in an area that doesn't usually come in contact with your body. Now moving on to real world benchmarks in the auto performance mode, and the results here are pretty much in line with what we've come to expect from the i7 1165G7 in a thin and light laptop. It'll lose to the AMD CPUs in multi-threaded benchmarks since they have double the number of processing threads. One of the other challenges here is auto performance mode doesn't run at a constant speed, so the results tend to vary a lot. But at the same time, it gives excellent performance in areas where the X1 Carbon is likely gonna be used most of the time. And that's lightly thread situations like word processing, spreadsheets, exports, and PDF creation. The premier results need a bit of an explanation here because they're almost too good to be true. Basically what's happening here is Lenovo is doing app detection in the auto performance mode we're using. So in this situation, the XE graphics gets a bit more juice and operates at about 225 megahertz. Since Premiere is GPU bound, that little extra bit of performance makes a big difference in longer renders like this one. Now taking a look at gaming performance, this is obviously not something that people will find themselves using the X1 for, but still, I know for a fact that when we used to travel to shows, Mike played Civ on his carbon during longer flights. I mean, it's a great way to pass time. And with the Iris XE graphics, this generation is actually able to play most basic titles at some pretty decent frame rates, unless you get into one of those situations where Intel's drivers end up crashing most of the time. I've gotta say, this is one area where AMD really needs to step things up because their Vega architecture is really, really starting to show its age on the laptop side of things. So final thoughts on the X1 Carbon Gen 9 from Lenovo. And guys, 
I'm seriously impressed with this laptop. The first thing that comes to my mind is just how lightweight it is while being extremely durable. The 16 by 10 screen is gorgeous and it's really bright. Um, the keyboard is still best in class. Battery life is also pretty good, but I would honestly pick up the 1200p option if you wanna get a little bit more life out of this thing. Uh, the performance is also quite nice as well. And most importantly, it's one of the quietest laptops that we've tested under heavier load situations. Now, if you look at the price situation, it is expensive, but what you're really paying for is something that's gonna last you for years to come ahead. And uh, you also get the enhanced security features like a privacy switch, an IR camera, Lenovo self-healing BIOS, uh, a DTPM chip that encrypts user data. Now, would the average consumer care about those things? Probably not. In fact, it's really geared towards professionals or you know, people who work in the corporate side where they deal with classified information. Uh, and I think most likely you might just end up getting one of these through work instead of paying out of your own pocket. Personally, I would pick this over the XPS 13 just because it got, it's got more ports and it's matte black, which is my vibe. And oh, if you do find it on sale um, and if it fits your budget, I would definitely pick this up without even thinking for a second. So. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the X1 Carbon from Lenovo. Let me know what you guys think about this little thing because um, this is my first ThinkPad laptop in a while um, and I'm seriously impressed. I kind of wish I, I think I might switch from the XPS 13, but I have to send this back. So yeah, anyways, that's for me guys. Oh, and don't forget to spend responsibly.